I mean, that cherishes it and will keep you out of heaven. So don't mess with these things. So um, set free in Christ, I encourage you to download that. We see it as missionaries around the world every day. Um, Satan is attacking God's people. Persecution is happening all the time. Um, I did a three-part series and it just appeared on the internet just recently, but essentially, um, in the Bible, persecution comes externally from these five sources, from civic rulers, such as Pontius Pilate or Herod, and these days it comes from Kim Jong-un up in North Korea, or from Ceausescu in Romania, and um, from religious leaders, uh, from the Imams, from the Ayatollahs, from the Buddhist priests of Sri Lanka, and from the Catholic leaders in Europe during the Dark Ages. It comes from business leaders. Um, uh, great as Diana of the Ephesians, there in Acts, what is it, Acts chapter 16 or 17, um, when the, the sale of silver idols has collapsed because of the preaching of the gospel, so the silversmiths um, start persecuting the gospel, uh, the gospel workers and the apostles. And today we have persecution from business leaders. And you say, well, how does that work? Well, if you work for Coca-Cola, or you work for the state of Washington, you post on Facebook, I believe marriage is between a biological male and a biological female, you see how long you keep your job. We have council cultures alive and well in this country where you have freedom of speech as long as you speak the approved speech and nothing else. And so we have woke corporations imposing their ESG indices on our society, and um, this is uh, this is a use as a form of persecution against Christians. Mob rule. Um, now there were mobs in the New Testament. Paul and uh, Barnabas were beaten by mobs. Um, there was a mob to try and crucify to kill Jesus. Um, mobs exist in the world today. Um, there are stories that Adventists, an Adventist couple, were burned to death in their car in Pakistan in about '95. The only Adventist couple in the country at the time, that's just north of Chechnya. A mob surrounded them, poured gasoline on the car, and set it afire, and they were gone. Um, this stuff happens even today. In, in India, this is a particularly acute problem right now, where the government is in, in, encouraging Hindu mobs to force Christians into reversion, because we practice conversion, and now the government's looking for reversion back into Hinduism. And so mob rule um, is a problem today, and it's a problem in America. It's a problem in America. And um, whether it's an online mob or a physical mob, we have mobs in America, and we have violence that is condoned by the dominant narrative, and nobody cares about that violence. I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes, if you're on the wrong side of the dominant narrative, violence is condoned against you. If you're in a Christian school, and a transgender kid comes and shoots you up, the next day, the White House press secretary supports the right of transgender kids to push back, in her words, to push back. That's the White House sanctioning violence against Christians. So don't think this isn't happening in our nation. This is real. And then family pressure. This starts in the first war with Cain and Abel. That was the first family pressure and the killing of Abel by Cain. And it happens today all around the world. People lose their families, they lose their marriages, they're disinherited because they've turned in faith to Jesus Christ. And it used to be as Adventists that um, uh, if we did an evangelistic series, uh, we, we'd, we'd have a meeting in this building, and uh, people would be attracted to that building, and then if one person came along and became an Adventist, and in the process lost her husband and lost access to her kids and lost her job, we celebrated that woman for the sacrifices she made, forgetting all the while that this is not socially sustainable. And she made huge sacrifices for Jesus Christ, but it's not socially sustainable to be cutting people off from society every time you baptize somebody. Because how is the gospel going to flow through society um, if it's only a bunch of rejects? People have to be able to share the gospel in their social networks without facing rejection. So we have family pressure in the, in the West, and it happens in Muslim, Hindu, and Buddhist countries. Those are some websites there on persecution. Um, the one I really encourage you to read is the bottom website. That's the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. This is in the State Department, and they produce an annual report on the state of religious liberty around the world today. And it's a pretty interesting report. They chart country by country what's happening. And I would encourage you to start reading that website, download the annual report, it's free, and uh, just pray over it and realize that persecution is now the norm, it's not the exception here on the planet Earth. And so sooner or later, that persecution is going to come knocking at our doors here. And we saw in the last three years, whether we liked the narrative or not, 
how quickly our nation would turn on a minority. Overnight, you were demonized, you were excluded, you were fired, you were mocked in the media and by the, the, the authorities. I'm not saying whether the narrative was right or wrong, I'm just pointing out that our nation is only too willing to turn on minorities, uh, the, turn overnight on minorities. And um, to say they're essentially not fit, you know, they're, they're useless eaters, as some people have said. And the fact thing is, God supported missionaries today. Um, student missionaries, or short term missionaries, partner missionaries, and career missionaries. And I would encourage you so, your number of student missionaries, they serve for one year, short term missionary service, like two or three years. Partner missionaries, if your hair is in my colour, um, that means that you've got some life experience. And uh, maybe if you've had kids, they've left home, you've had more, we just probably pay off. And you want to do more for God than sit and pay money and to help, you know, send money overseas. Um, there is places in the world to take a pattern of missionaries. There are parts of the world that value the wisdom that this color hair represents. You've seen life, you've raised kids, you've battled cancer, you've gone through um, you know, repossessions and bankruptcy. You know that life has its ups and its downs, and you bring a wealth of spiritual maturity and gifts to the mission field. So, we also look for pattern of missionaries, they serve for about one year at a time. And career missionaries, maybe you're a, a younger person here, I would say like 25 to 40, that age range preferably. And why that age range? Because by the, uh, by the age of 40, your brain starts to lose its neuroplasticity. And it's hard to learn foreign languages when, when you're beyond 40 years of age. Um, the younger you are, the better. And so I'd encourage you, if you're raising kids, make sure they learn a second language at school, if all possible. And try and find one major mission language. The five major mission languages of today um, are French for West Africa, Hindi for India, Mandarin for China, Arabic for the Arabic speaking world, and Turkish. Because that covers Turkey and all of Central Asia. Those are the five major mission languages of today. And if you learn one of those five, we encourage your kids to be grandkids to learn one of those five languages, um, you're setting them up for success one day as a missionary in one of those major portions of the world today. So I want to encourage you tonight to, to think about how you as a congregation can be involved in missions. I know some of you give to Lost Bowery, some of you give to Maranatha, some of you go on Maranatha trips. Um, I would say, you know, I need to add to the missions, and I would say there is something everybody can do. For some of you, it may be good to go on a Maranatha trip once year for two weeks. For some of you, it may be good to go and share the evangelistic series in Kenya where you've been for three weeks. For some of you may want to give some money to Ottawa Outreach to sponsor a required worker. For some of you may want to be involved in gospel ministry here in this town here. Uh, maybe involved in community services. Uh, maybe blessing the poor of this community in some kind of ministry this church operates. But there's something that each one of us can do. And so I want to encourage you to start, if you're not actively involved in some kind of ministry, to ask God, what gifts have you given me? And what kind of ministry have I been involved with that will give those gifts the chance to shine? Everybody's got gifts. And um, in the average church, 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. And those 20% get burnt out real quick. Okay? So if God has given you a certain gift, pray about it and ask your pastor and church leaders is there a ministry that can be involved with that will let these gifts shine for God's glory? And for some people, they pray. Some people pray about it. Some give. They have the ability to give. And then some people go. I want to encourage you. Everyone in the room can do one of those three things to pray, they will go. And Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, He said, You're going to remain in Jerusalem until power will send for you on high, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Well, the point about that verse, those two verses there, 8 and 9, chapter 1, is that the gift of the Holy Spirit is given to those who engage in mission. That's what we see the Holy Spirit in, in the most powerful form. And if I don't engage in ministry, I don't have a burden for souls, I don't care whether my neighbor's going to burn when Jesus comes to heaven, then why would God give me the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? So I want to see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in my church, and in my life, and in my family, then the prerequisite is in Acts chapter 1, verse 89, that I am intentionally involved in the gospel ministry for Jesus Christ. Okay? So I encourage you to, to actively ask God for an opportunity to serve somewhere. Uh, here in Washington, uh, overseas, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. You use your gifts that God has given you, and you'll see God work in a powerful and beautiful way. 
To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.